Hello everybody, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to, welcome to another crazy mini lecture. This week we'll be talking over westward expansion. This is the story of how a lot of Americans moved further and further west all the way out to California with the promise of a better life. This story includes a lot of hardships for a lot of people that moved out there. One overarching question I get a lot is why they would move out there. And as one person puts it, they had nothing to lose and they could gain a fortune. One of the driving factors you'll see is a great state of poverty and desperation, which caused a lot of people to take incredible risks for a better life. Many of them were seeking fortunes. Others were just escaping um, ab abject poverty, and quite a few of them lost that gamble. I'm going to have too many lectures here because this is one of my favorite subjects. Uh, the first is the Donner Party, and the second is the California Gold Rush. Anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, wait, never mind. Uh, anyway, uh, wash your hands and don't touch your face. Have a good day. So, in 1846, 1846, sorry, April of 1846, 87 pioneers leave from Springfield, Illinois, heading out for California. They're led by a guy named George Donner. He was a 62-year-old farmer. He was ill-prepared. They have 27 wagons. They have fancy foods. They have liquor. Uh, these fancy wagons have built-in beds and stoves, and they're the latest technology. And on July 20th, of 1846, they leave Fort Bridger, Wyoming, and they decide to take a shortcut. Now, <clears throat> what it was supposed to do is to save 400 miles by crossing south of the Great Salt Lake. The reason they thought this would be a good idea is because they've read it in a guidebook. Now, here's the problem, is this guy that wrote it, Hastings, um, yeah, he, uh, uh, he wrote the guidebook, um, and he had never actually been there. He'd never followed it. He just heard about maybe a potential path or something like that. His real motivation, Hastings' real motivation for doing this, was actually he was trying to overthrow California's Mexican government because the U.S. did not have uh, any bit of California at this point. So he was trying to overthrow California's Mexican government. In order to do that, he needed more people out there, more Americans out there. So he was trying to get people to immigrate, uh, illegally so, into California. Now, while they're going out there, while the Donner Party's going out there, they have huge boulders that are in their path. They have an arid desert at the same time. They have dangerous mountain passes slowing their ex 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 uh, uh, expedition to a crawl. At one point, they travel 36 miles in 21 days. That is 36 miles in 21 days. You could get out and walk faster than that and further than that at that time period. But they had a lot of stuff they were taking with them. Uh, what was supposed to be two days in the desert was really actually closer to six days. It took them 12 weeks later to reach the Sierra Nevada mountains. By October 31st, they had gone to bed on October 30th, and they woke up on the morning of October 31st uh, with five-foot-high snowdrifts. At that point, they were trapped. They were forced to eat mice. They were forced to eat their rugs. They even ate their own shoes. And then eventually, as we all, I'm sure, have heard, uh, they were forced to eat the dead. Twelve women and five men made a last-ditch effort to cross the pass. Now, these weren't the only survivors, but they did make a last-ditch effort to cross the pass. They tried to push through the snowdrifts. During a severe storm, uh, two of the group died, and then these survivors are said to have stripped the bones from the flesh, um, or stripped the flesh from the bones, roasted it, and ate it, and averting their eyes from each other and weeping while they're doing it. Uh, seven of these um, people uh, survive, barely. And by then, the rest had died, and two other uh, Indian guides that were with them had actually been shot and eaten as well. <clears throat> now, while all this is going on, people do know that they're heading out that direction, because they did tell people where they were going. So rescue teams had actually tried to go into the past four times. And once these, they do find these people that had actually um, survived, um, they even try even more. And eventually, they do find the other 40 that had been left behind, and they're even wor in worse shape. Of the original uh, 87 members of the party, only 47 of them survived. So Westward Expansion um, is basically, it's a story of the movement into new frontiers. Uh, it's one of the overarching themes of American history, the settlement into new frontiers. You get a lot of people associated with this, Daniel Boone, Mountain Men, Davy Crockett, uh, but eventually, the physical frontier itself is closed. In 1893, the historian Frederick Jackson Turner said that the closure of the uh, 
uh, the frontier marks the end of an era in U.S. history, that the settlement of the frontier had shaped our, our nation's character, and it really had, that we had become a very self-reliant and ambitious and democratic and egalitarian sort of people. And then some of that's debatable. Uh, Turner actually said that the frontier stripped off the garments of civilization and created a new and different kind of human being. The story of westward expansion, in the eyes of Turner's critics, however, was a story of imperial expansion, uh, displacement, occupation. It pitted rapacious Americans against Indians and Mexicans. And the West, they say, uh, Turner's critics, say that the West was stolen from its original inhabitants and that were reduced merely to colonial subordination. Now, out of the two main routes that were out uh, to the far west, you have the Santa Fe Trail and the Oregon Trail. Uh, one of these trails was a guy, uh, was created by a guy named William Becknell, who's an American trader. He opened up the Santa Fe Trail in 1821. What he was trying to do is he's trying to uh, establish this New Mexican Southwest and tie it to the rest of the U.S. economically and thereby also make it easier for the U.S. to go ahead and take some of that territory. Now, on September of 1821, Becknell left Arrow Rock, Missouri. He had $300 worth of goods on pack animals, and two months and 800 miles later, he arrived in Santa Fe, and he was nearly dead at that point. He actually had to drink the blood from one of his mules and the contents of one of his um, buffaloes, or a, of a buffalo's stomach, um, had to consume that in order to survive. <clears throat> Now, this was actually uh, the later trail. In 1811 and 1812, a lot of fur trappers had already marked out the Oregon Trail. This is the longest and most famous route, so much so that we even have a video game that uh, has been made about it. And, of course, everybody knows that he, most people die of dysentery or one thing or another on that uh, game. Uh, it was a test of endurance and human ability. It was a journey that lasted roughly six months. You had prairie fires. You had blizzards. You had impassable mountains. You had cholera and a bunch of other diseases, of course, like dysentery, uh, very common out there. You food, water, and wood were scarce. Now, here's the interesting part of, part of this. In order for uh, them to find sufficient fuel to have a fire upon which to cook, they had to burn, you know, you can go ahead and guess it, um, but I'll tell you, cow dung. They had to burn cow dung in order to get sufficient fuel. So basically, they were cooking all of their uh, fires over, or all of their food over an open fire of poo. <clears throat> so, in the early 1840s, 40s, you get thousands of people that are heading west uh, toward California and Oregon. In 1841, the first 69 pioneers left Missouri heading off to California. They were led by an Ohio school teacher named John Bidwell. They had no idea uh, what to expect. They also had no idea what they would need to do to survive. They eventually had to abandon their wagons and eat their pack animals nearly raw. So here's the thing. Why did they go? Why would the people go out there? And these people were not off on the East Coast either. Most of them came from the Mississippi River border states. These were more recent states. Uh, either they themselves or their parents had actually moved several times before getting there, and then they were all moving further out West again. Mark Twain referred to these people as, let's see if I can do my Mark Twain voice here, rude, uneducated, brave, suffering terrific hardships with sailor-like stoicism, heavy drinkers, heavy fighters, reckless fellows, everyone, elephantly jolly, foul-witted, profane, profligal in the money, yet worthy, uh, yet in the main, honest, trustworthy, faithful to promises and duty, and often picaresquely magnanimous. That's a horrible Mark Twain impression, but I go ahead and challenge you to do one better yourself. That'll be fine. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so one of the reasons they were moving out there, because in 1830, Iowa uh, was at that time Indian land. The Sauk, Fox, and Missouri and other um, tribes had inhabited uh, the area. But in 1832, you get the Black Hawk War, and that opens up the first strip of Iowa to settlement. By 1840, Iowa's population of Americans had ridden, uh, risen up to 40,000 people. Now, there was no government land office that was out there in Iowa in 18, um, that was, wasn't established until 1838. So a lot of the people that were out there were squatters. They moved out there, they cleared the land, they built their houses, and they believed that the federal government would give them the right to purchase the land at low prices. Later settlers, known as claim jumpers, 
tried to take the squatters' land away. They tried to outbid them or take over the land when the fit town when the family went to town for supplies, because that would be like an event to do. Uh, kind of like today, when somebody goes uh, to the grocery store, it just becomes kind of an event, at least around here. So they formed um, more than 100 land claim associations and extra legal associations. Uh, they lobbied Congress for a preemption bill, which was supposed to reorganize their squatters' rights. They, uh, squatters who lived on land and made improvements had first option to buy up to 160 acres for $1.25 an acre. Uh, lumberjacks and miners went first, and then a whole bunch of other people uh, continued to f uh, follow. Meanwhile, people in the Mississippi Valley started heading off to the West Coast in the 1870s and 1880s because uh, after the Civil War, sometimes they had nothing else to do. So that's it for today. Hopefully this uh, actually winds up uh, being able to be uploaded and I don't have to edit it into too many different places. We'll see.